bedanya ngira ngira pada temanan yang nyetir nyuruh ke bedanya jam nyelang motor di karya nyelang motor di karya Wait, ini bedanya lagi nanti 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 Abira bilen ayu tambah sadar, karena ayu tambah sadar anda kepul ngajak buah nak gua ke dosa. The youth ambassadors, what they do, a unique from what the adult do. Gua mau apa pun, nak bermakci, walau pun nak bermakci, lebar lebar. Gua mau apa pun, lebar nak nak gemuk di kepi nak bermakci. We do tell them that uh, let them not leave the dog without checking it. They have to check every dog. And we also tell them that they need to take the dog to the dog park for the exercise. Because if the dog is just kept at home without taking it to the dog park, it will not be healthy anymore. Pai belain, pur belain. The young guys are really performing that dramas for the community. Community are interesting it. They like it because that will even show them that uh, the way you you tether your dog and the way that you tether the cats. So this one, people are coming to learn. For them to know, then you will copy from that drama and put it in a practice. Nama yang kau cek, na na bacaan mau kiat, buma to na bacaan tau cek mau kerja awal, na na bacaan cek mau kerja pun ada yang mana mau cek dia lagi. Amir buma to na berperang awal. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you to a masterclass on overcoming challenges, the Ethiopia story. I'm Dr. Kasha Vijayas, Vice President for Health Programs at the Carter Center. I will be moderating today's panel. I'd like to extend my appreciation to the School Forum for providing the ecosystem event platform for an impact-oriented conversation among innovators and change leaders, discussing bold and equitable solutions to pressing social problems. The question that we'll be addressing in today's session is, how do we continue to face forward to continue healthy lives and promote well-being amidst challenges to disease elimination and eradication? You will hear the acronym NTDs, which means neglected tropical diseases in today's conversation. Neglected tropical diseases are a group of parasitic, viral, and bacterial diseases that cause substantial illness for more than a billion people globally. Affecting the world's poorest people, these diseases impair physical and cognitive development, contribute to maternal and child illness and death, make it difficult to earn a living and limit productivity in, in the workplace. Despite cost-effective interventions that lead to elimination, challenges increase vulnerability to diseases and pose barriers to the effective delivery of intervention and interruption of disease transmission. We just took a quick trip to Ethiopia by video, and you learned two unique innovations in response to disease eradication challenges. These innovations were youth ambassadors and proactive tethering, developed with communities and implemented in the guinea worm eradication program. You'll hear more about innovations and others in today's conversation. 
I'm really delighted to be joined by four distinguished panelists who will introduce themselves as they share the unique perspectives. We'll hear about Ethiopia's inspiring experience of creative implementation and philanthropy to reach neglected tropical disease end game targets for guinea worm disease, trachoma, river blindness, and lymphatic filariasis. Our conversation today is closely tied to three sustainable development goals. These goals are SDG3, which is good health and well-being, SDG6, clean water and sanitation, and SDG17, partnerships for the goals. Since 1995, the Carter Center has had the privilege of working in close partnership with the government of Ethiopia and with numerous trusted partners to reduce Ethiopia's neglected tropical disease burden. Today, you will hear from representatives of two of our partners, including Ethiopia's Federal Ministry of Health and Children Investment Fund Foundation. The structure of our session includes a panel discussion and approximately 10 minutes at the end for audience questions and panelist answers. We invite you to contribute questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen for that portion of your program. Please indicate which panelist or panelists you are addressing your question to. I will be minding the time and will interrupt speakers when we need to move on to the next topic or speaker. A note that we are recording today's conversation for future use. Again, a very warm welcome to you all and to our panelists. Now, for, without further ado, let's begin our, set, our discussion. So the first question that I actually have for the panelists is, yesterday was World Health Day. Why is the focus on neglected tropical diseases important for your country or your organization and for health and health equity? Let's hear first from Ms. Sarah Yurian, followed by Ms. Mr. Fikre Saifa, and then Dr. Kebede uh, Derebe, and then finally, Dr. Zerahun Tedese, please. Panelists, I would kindly request to limit your responses to a maximum of three minutes per person, please. Let's hear from Ms. Sarah Yurian first. Sarah. Thank you, Dr. Ijaz, and greetings to fellow panelists and audience. My name is Sarah Yurian, and I'm currently the Senior Associate Director for the Guinea Worm Eradication Program at the Carter Center. I'd like to start by sharing that while growing up in Plains, Georgia, former US President Jimmy Carter witnessed his mother, who was a nurse, working to help those in his own small town who had contracted trachoma. And so when the Carter Center was established, President and Mrs. Carter knew they wanted to champion health as a human right and work to address trachoma and other diseases of poverty on a global scale. Now, entities themselves and efforts to address them certainly do not exist in isolation. Uh, for example, many NTDs actually suppress immune response. And so if someone is fighting an NTD, they may be less able to combat other health challenges. And so overall health can be improved by focusing on NTDs. We also see many NTDs, including trachoma and guinea worm, related to safe water. World Health Day this year stressed clean air and water and food for all. And so where safe water exists, we see that guinea worm disease does not. Dr. Ijaz, as you mentioned in your opening remarks, NTDs tend to impact the most disenfranchised populations, those beyond the end of the road. And so addressing NTDs impacts not only the human condition of affected populations now, but also begins to address issues of equity and basic access and empowers communities to address other issues in the future. Over the last 30 years, the Carter Center has been committed to preventing suffering with efforts focused on neglected tropical disease elimination, which is interrupting disease transmission in a specific geographic area, such as a country, and eradication, which is worldwide permanent interruption of transmission of a specific disease. As an entry point for improving population health in Ethiopia and other places around the world. We work in partnership with and at the invitation of national ministers of health. And so our role as the Carter Center is to provide technical and financial support to national NTD programs that are owned by each country's health system. Our approach prioritizes building trust at the local level to help health workers gain the tools and knowledge they need to improve their own lives and lives of others in their community. And we encourage community ownership and have forged longstanding 
mutually respectful partnerships with national governments, local communities, committed individuals, and other partners. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Sarah. Now let's hear from Mr. Fikre Saifa. Three minutes maximum, hello. please. Thank you. Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, thanks so much, Dr. Ijaz. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me uh, the chance to be part of this program today. Uh, my name is Fikra Saifa. I'm working in the Federal Minister of Health Ethiopia as a neglected tropical disease uh, program coordinator. Um, uh, my profession is a public health expert uh, with master's in epidemiology. Currently, uh, currently as you all know, um, uh, the world uh, worldwide neglected tropical disease affects a million of people, uh, most vulnerable and marginalized people, and cause an immense uh, suffering and devastating health and social and economic impacts. Uh, Ethiopia is disproportionately affected by a century-long uh, scourge of multiple neglected tropical diseases as compared with other develop developing countries, including the Sub-Saharan Africa. A dozen Entities inflict morbidity, mortality, and disability in most disadvantaged population groups in the country and uh, negatively affect the social economic development of a given country. Um, Ethiopian citizens and communities affected by those uh, 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 disfranchising uh, diseases are subject to severe stigmatization and isolation from social and cultural life uh, and are vulnerable for mental health problems. Ethiopia has a key uh, leader in their response to entities and uh, our government commitment to the health and well-being of uh, our population is steady fast. Our global and regional commitment have paved the way for uh, Ethiopia to establish an evidence-based program for control and elimination of entities, allowing us to fulfill our commitment uh, and improve the quality of life for some of uh, our most vulnerable communities. As part of uh, the commitment uh, to the uh, World Health Organization Entity Roadmap uh, 2020 through 2030, Ethiopia Minister of Health uh, endorsed the third uh, national entity strategic plan, uh, which will be implemented from 2020, uh, from 2021 through 2025 in January 2022. Uh, most recently in March 22, uh, 2022, Ethiopian leadership signed the Abu Dhabi Declaration on Guinea Worm Eradication uh, pledging uh, our full commitment to the global campaign to eradicate the second human disease. Ethiopia has made a stride uh, to ensure our workforce affects the population. For example, most of the health extension workers, uh, workers are females. Uh, Ethiopia has made a stride to ensure our workforce reflects the population uh, for example, most of the health workers and health development armies are uh, women. Mm -hmm. Success in entity elimination leads to strengthened uh, Ethiopian health system. Uh, partner investment in the entity helps us uh, to strengthen our uh, health system, uh, which enabled us to prepare and sustain health outcomes for vulnerable population and address other health challenges, including pandemic uh, preparedness, uh, the World Health Day was a great opportunity for us to create awareness among the different stakeholders to call for multi-sectoral collaboration uh, in entity prevention and control efforts. We used the opportunity to advocate for resource mobilization and pro program sustainability. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Fikre. Uh, moving on to Dr. Kebede uh, Derebe. Greetings and thank you, Dr. Uh, Ijaz, distinguished panelists and audiences. My name is Kabede Derbe. I am Entity Director for Africa with Children Investment Fund Foundation. I'm an epidemiologist by the training. The question asked was, why is a focus on neglected tropical disease important for your organization? So nearly 22% of the global population is at risk of devastating human productivity and perpetual cycle of poverty due to one or more neglected tropical diseases. In 2019, NCDs accounted for approximately 19 million disability adjusted life years lost globally. 
Interventions to prevent and control NTDs are one of the best buys in global public health, yielding an estimated net benefit to affected individual of about 25 US dollar per US dollar one invested in prevention uh, or in preventive chemotherapy. Reaching NTD targets could avert an estimated 590 million Ability adjusted life years between the to 657 billion. The interventions are also proven into interventions against neglected tropical disease in 2010. And to date, 42 countries have eliminated at least one NTD. CIF has been a long-standing partner in global effort to control, eliminate, and eradicate neglected tropical diseases. From 2011 to 2020, CIF funded 15 NTD projects in 18 countries in Africa and Asia. If investments have been primarily targeting four diseases, which are guinea worm, schistosomiasis, soil transmitted elements, and trachoma. CIF funding has supported the delivery of over 2 billion treatments through donated medicines and thousands of surgeries to treat trachomatous trichosis the landing stage of trachoma. CIF contributed to the scale up of the warming program at national and artists. We are focusing on evidence and innovation. By providing NTD service needs and who live at the end of the road, equity can be achieved. Through NTD intervention, children attend school with improved, COVID, with improved productivity and families and communities can thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kabede. And uh, sorry, we were having a little bit of interruption as you were speaking, but I think we got most of it. So now let's move on to Dr. Tudese uh, Zarahun um, for the next three minutes. Thank you, Dr. Rijas, for having me. Uh, my name is Zarahun Tadesa. I'm a senior public health specialist with over 30 years of public health practice. Uh, for the last 11 years, I have been serving as country representative for the Carter Center in Ethiopia. Let me uh, use this opportunity to supplement to what the three panelists eloquently uh, talked us through. The Carter Center's current health programs in Ethiopia include health development partnership to eliminate or control guinea worm disease, trachoma, river blindness, and lymphatic filariasis. The center's long history of experience in Ethiopia also included malaria elimination program, agriculture program, and public health training initiative. The Carter Center is a pioneer and long-standing partner to the Ministry of Health Ethiopia, especially in the fight against NTDs. As long-standing, dependable implementing partner, we have contributed immensely to the establishment, the scale-up, ownership and leadership of NTDs by the Ministry of Health and Regional Health Bureaus. We have also contributed to strengthening program monitoring, operational research and development of innovative solutions badly needed as we approach the last mile and subsequently the finish line. These were made possible through establishment of independent advisory bodies like Ethiopia and Oncosarchiasis Elimination Expert Advisory Committee, National Certification Committee for Guinea Worm Eradication Program, and Ethiopian Trachoma Advisory Group. We also assisted establishment of Onco and Trachoma Molecular Labs and training of researchers in Onco and Guinea Worm programs. Dear distinguished attendees and viewers, by now, I assume you got good understanding why we worked as a team to host this masterclass on overcoming challenges in Ethiopia, NTD program. No one government sector, donor, or implementing partner sing can single-handedly address those problems in Ethiopia to the satisfaction of the people in need. Our journey to our dreamland of Ethiopia freed from NTDs would certainly continue to be challenging for some more years. However, with effective partnership, global partners renewed commitment to universal health coverage, 
health equity, compassionate leadership, and active engagement of the infected and the affected communities. Rest assured, the last mile, known for unpleasant surprises, is likely to get less frustrating and more exciting. All of us are stronger, smarter, and wiser than any one of us. That is why we, the key players in the fight against NTDs, talk the talk, talk the walk, walk the talk, and finally walk the walk all the way together. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zerahun, and thank you all. Uh, I hear your passion for and commitment to this work rooted in a common interest in uh, improving the lives of the less fortunate. Dr. Zerahun and Mr. Fikre, would you say more about how neglected tropical disease programs have improved the lives of people at the end of the road in Ethiopia and what innovations make these achievements possible? Again, I would greatly appreciate if you can limit your responses to three minutes each. Thank Zerahun. you again, I'll do that. Uh, we have come a long way and registered milestone achievements in the last 10 years since the Ministry of Health began prioritizing NTDs in its strategic planning, budgeting, and human resources. In partnership with the Ministry of Health and many donors and partners like CIF and others, we have managed to determine the burden and distribution of most of the NTDs and shrink their maps and correspondingly reduce the socioeconomic impact on the poor, including those in hard to reach villages of Ethiopia. When I share you helicopter view of those early achievements, I don't want the journey to look like as if it was all roses. For those of us working far away from the end of the road, our professional lives are filled with both stars and scars. Let me keep mine aside and share you just one story of frightening incident that happened to a colleague of the Carter Center who worked on Guinea Worm Eradication Program in a village. It was back in 2012, during rainy season, in a Bawiri village of Gogorada, Gambella region, Ethiopia. A team of four people were on vector control mission when they have to apply a pesticide chemical by the name Avet for the treatment of a pond called Lel Chimich. A Guinea worm officer by the name Mr. Omodolenga was measuring the depths of Lel Chimich pond to estimate the amount of abet chemical to be applied to the pond. He stood on what looked like a fallen and floating log at the end of, at the edge of Lel Chimich pond and starting measuring the depths of the pond. Before he was done with the measurement, the fallen floating log looking matter on which he stood was actually a reptile, a crocodile, some buzzing in the pond. As soon as the crocodile started stretching, our colleague was horrified and his adrenal medulla ordered him to choose among fight, flight, or freeze. Fortunately for all of us, he chose to jump off and run away. He had to run long distance before he could collect his breath and narrate the deadly incident to the other members of the team who also ran with him in the same direction without knowing the reason for his flight. There are other funny and disturbing stories of mine and other colleagues. If our paths cross again some other time or some other place, I'm more than happy to share you those stories. Thank you, Dr. Zerahun, for sharing this uh, incredible story. Uh, let's just hear from Mr. Fikre. It, it definitely takes a lot of bravery and, and uh, commitment to do that sort of work. Uh, Mr. Fikre, over to you. Thanks so much, Dr. Ijaz, once again. Um, Ethiopia's community-based health extension program was launched in 2004 to improve access to health services, especially in rural and uh, medically unserved areas. Through the national health extension program, community members, mostly women, are selected to undergo training to become health extension workers, which are equivalent to community uh, nurses and are then employed on the government payroll to provide uh, promotive, preventive, and selective corrective services with special attention to women and children in rural settings. The Minister of Health of Ethiopia has prioritized a stronger health workforce with uh, incorporation of health extension uh, workers and uh, the health development army to reach the households for most vulnerable population where there is no access to basic health services. 
The role of health extension workers and women health development armies is enormous for the prevention and control of entities in Ethiopia. They are responsible for providing health education on entities, make a house to house visit and screen for people affected by entities. Um, at this juncture, let me tell you one case story as an example for the health extension workers contribution in entity program. A few months ago, my, the national team from the Ministry of Health went to one of the most unreached communities to visit householders, some of the householders. They found a 65 year old man called Abba Jebel, who is a farmer and a father of nine. And uh, this guy is a sole provider for 11 family members. Abba Jebel has been suffering from a serious eye pain, a serious eye pain for the last 30 years. As a farmer, he spends most of his time on his farm, but sometimes his severe eye pain keeps him in bed for the entire day. Um, usually, he usually asks his family members to epilate or to pull out the eyelashes rubbing his eyes. But the, eyelash wi the eyelashes wi uh, will grow back again in a few days with severe, more severe pain when the eyelashes grow back. Uh, but Jevan had lived uh, with this condition for the last 30 years. Health extension workers met Abba Jebel during their house to house visit, and they linked him with the trained integrated eye health care workers uh, so he could get a trachomatis tricasis surgery. He, uh, after the visit, uh, during the visit by my team, he told them that uh, I don't have words to express my happiness now. My 30 years pain has gone forever and my families are filled with happiness now. Ethiopia's Minister of Health has prioritized the integrity of many entities services to reduce costs and workforces leading to improved uh, coordinated services for many. Integration of, of entity which has common service delivery platform including co-administration of NTD medicines and integration of health education and awareness creation for the community. In addition to, to this, the Minister of Health gives a due attention to institutionalize the use of innovative technology to accelerate the NTD elimination efforts in the country. The schistosomiasis and soil transmitted helminthiasis transmission break project, uh, which is being supported by Children's Investment Fund Foundation can be mentioned as an example for this. In this project, we are using fingerprint technology to capture people treated for schistosomiasis and soil transmitted helminthes during mass drug administration. With this technology, the aim, of, uh, the aim is to achieve at least 90% mass drug administration coverage to be sure that no one is left from the treatment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fekre and Dr. Zerahun. Um, we have a few more minutes before we move on to the next question. So I would like to take this opportunity to uh, ask um, you to comment on the importance of uh, the community health volunteers and the community health workers on the front lines uh, in the work against um, you know, electrotropical diseases. So if you can comment very briefly, Dr. Uh, Zara Hoon and Mr. Fikre, that would be great. So why don't I turn over first to Dr. Zara Hoon and then Mr. Fikre. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ijaz, uh, for this great opportunity. Uh, I prefer to put it like this. No uh, community level volunteers, no CDDs, no NTD programs. And it won't stop there. Even big programs like malaria and tuberculosis harvest a lot from this network of community health workers. So we are developing a platform in which we are strengthening the health uh, system and the health system is going from the health posts to the doorsteps through uh, the network of volunteers. So they are indispensable, they are irreplaceable. Thank you, um, very true. Um, Mr. Fikri? Yes, uh, just to complement uh, what has been said by Dr. Darishon, so those health development army 
are from the community, within the community, to the community. So they, they uh, work for their community. They try to produce their health uh, by themselves. So they are accessible for the community. Uh, the only thing that any program uh, to be achieved is we have to use uh, the platform with a small investment, with a small uh, a minimal resource uh, intervention. We are harvesting a lot from this platform. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed, uh, your comments are uh, right on target because uh, we've seen this during the COVID-19 pandemic that by working directly with the communities and um, the community health workers and our volunteers, as well as the community itself, that has actually kept on our programs going. And uh, the work had, has continued for most of the programs on the front line. So, so thank you very much for those comments. So now moving on to our final question before the Q&A period, uh, Sarah and Dr. Kibede, what challenges um, have faced electrotropical disease efforts in Ethiopia and how have the Carter Center and the Children Investment Fund Foundation supported communities and the government of Ethiopia to identify and implement solutions? Again, three minutes maximum, please. Um, so let's just uh, go ahead and go to Sarah first. Thank you, Dr. Ijaz. Um, since 1986, we have seen a 99.99% reduction in guinea worm cases globally. And in 2021, there were only 15 human cases reported and only one of those cases was in Ethiopia. But one of the biggest challenges the global campaign has faced uh, in this last mile of eradication is actually guinea worm infections in dogs. And the worms infecting dogs are the same worms that are infecting humans. And so we must address these dog infections to achieve eradication. And so far, one of our best interventions has been working with dog owners to keep dogs inside the household compound instead of letting them roam freely, the strategy we call proactive tethering. Obong, the young boy in the video at the top of our session, uh, was demonstrating how this is done. And this intervention actually originated in Ethiopia with the chief of one village. Every year his dogs are being crippled with guinea worm. Um, and for him, this was a big problem because he used his dogs to hunt for food and to protect his farm from wildlife. And he also knew that dogs with guinea worm could spread guinea worm back to humans, including his own family. And so he decided to keep his dogs in his compound all the time to ensure that one, they could not contaminate water if they did have guinea worm, and two, prevent them from being exposed to infection outside the compound. And this strategy was actually later adopted by other communities. And today there are several thousand dogs in over 60 communities in Ethiopia that are now kept in the compounds. Of course, the program recognizes this is something new in these communities. And so they provide additional support, including food for the dogs and access to veterinary care. Um, and there are even dog parks for exercise as we all saw in the video. But the success of Obong and the, a team in Ethiopia to contain dog infections with this intervention inspired the National Guinea Worm Eradication Program in Chad to implement the same thing. Um, and it was actually, the strategy was actually launched in Chad by the Minister of Health in 2020. And since then, we've actually seen a significant reduction in dog infections in Chad. Mali's Guinea Worm Eradication Program is also considering the same strategy for their use. And so I find it really inspiring to see how a community-driven innovation from one community in Ethiopia is now having a global impact in the fight against guinea worm. Obong, um, the young boy from the video, as you saw, was also personally affected by guinea worm. And so he's also now a youth ambassador. Uh, and so he and the other youth helped to implement these interventions to stop transmission of guinea worm including the proactive tethering, to ensure that others in his community don't suffer from guinea worm the way he did. And so I think this is just another example of a unique model that's developed locally in Ethiopia through conversation um, and co-development with communities. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, let's just move on to Dr. Kibede. Thank you, Dr. Ijaz. Maybe uh, 
the human stories told by uh, Dr. Zariun and Fukre are really compelling. Uh, just to add on what Fukre said on uh, the transmission project, which SIF and uh, the Minister of Health Ethiopia are implementing. So uh, the feasibility of uh, transmission break of soil transmitted and soil, uh, schistosomiasis in program setting has not been demonstrated. So the role of water sanitation and hygiene and behavioral change communication in reducing the prevalence of schisto and SDH is debated. CIF works with the Minister of Health Ethiopia and other partners and designed a project to test breaking transmission of worms at scale in country program by combining community-wide treatment intervention related to water sanitation and hygiene. This investment is currently being implemented in Walaita zone and the results are forthcoming. This is one of the greatest uh, you know, uh, intervention uh, if demonstrated uh, you know, transmission break uh, definitely uh, will have a significant impact on reducing the burden of soil transmitted elements and issues from the country. Another challenge was, uh, you know, Ethiopia is one of the countries with a huge backlog of trachiasis uh, in the country. CIF is currently supporting the Minister of Health Ethiopia and partners such as Orbis and the Carter Center to clear this backlog of trachiasis, which is a blinding condition caused by trachoma. Through scale up of site saving surgeries, two thousands of people are benefiting preventing their site, which uh, uh, supporting the country to be on track to elimination of trachoma. In this project also, as Fikre mentioned, we are using biometrics measurements so that we could be able to track uh, tracheasis cases as they you know, pass through the continuum of care. Another important initiative is CIF in collaboration with the Minister of Health Ethiopia developed NTD sustainability framework which was subsequently adopted by many organizations and countries and shaping the global uh, sustainability framework approach. Overall, beyond the NTD program, CIF is also implementing WASH interventions, which are critical to sustain the gains achieved through mass drug administration. We have different uh, water uh, projects, sanitation projects, which are currently implementing, which will have definitely impact on uh, uh, NTD prevention and eradication. Overall, partnership with government is important to ensure sustainability. So it's important to support the Ethiopian government in its path towards achieving sustainable NTD program and domestic resource mobilization. I thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kabere and uh, Sarah. Uh, we have a few more minutes before we uh, go on to uh, general questions and answers. So um, based on the remarks, um, Sarah, that you made and, and Dr. Kabede, you also pointed out to something very important, which is replicating the best practices. Like um, Sarah, you pointed out towards, um, you know, the proactive tethering of dogs, which got started in Ethiopia and that got, then got replicated to other places. Um, on the same wavelength, Dr. Kabede, um, you just, pointed out towards the NTD sustainability framework. And I wanted to um, ask you if that has been uh, adopted by any other countries or are there any plans to sort of share that NTD, NTD sustainability framework that might be applicable to other countries um, uh, which actually have NTDs? Dr. Kabede. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Rijas. Yes, uh, the NTD framework tool was was developed a few years ago uh, through the Children Investment Fund Foundation resource, as well as with the Minister of his collaboration. Since then, the tool has been widely used. In fact, the Ethiopian Minister of Health also uh, developed recently uh, a clear uh, sustainability framework, which really, uh, you know, emphasize on domestic resource mobilization, intersectoral collaboration, et cetera, so that we could achieve a country-led program where sustainability is really uh, implemented. So the tool also really informed the global uh, you know, sustainability framework tool development at WHO level. Uh, 
And many countries are currently in the process of developing their own NTD sustainability plan, which is very critical in terms of, you know, uh, having a clear pathways where countries would be leading their NTD programs and also mobilizing resources through, uh, you know, local philanthropies, uh, uh, you know, public financing, and other important private uh, philanthropies, which are critical in terms of uh, achieving the NTD 2030 goal. Thank you very much. And, and I, think, I think the other important thing, which is really important to sustainability is the political commitment from the government itself. Um, and, and I would um, like to ask Mr. Fikre or the, Dr. Zarahoon if you want to make any comment related to that. Yes, I uh, can come in here, Dr. Jazz. Yes, as you pointed out, it's a political commitment and uh, higher official leadership is a very critical, uh, a very critical thing that uh, the country can achieve. It is uh, targeted for either entity or any other public health um, interventions. So uh, coming into the, if we are talking about the Ethiopian context, um, the Entity program in general is a very young uh, program. Uh, it's been almost eight or nine years. So within this period, the government of Ethiopia has established uh, its own uh, uh, program, which will be led by the Minister of Health. We have a team dedicated for the entity program and going down to the regions, there is a team, a dedicated team for entity and up to the district and sub-district level. So that is very critical uh, part of um, the entity intervention. So once we have the political commitment and the government uh, leadership is on, uh, whatever it is, it's possible to achieve in the desired period. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, in the interest of time, uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, to the, the general Q and A. Um, so, for audience, please go ahead and use the Q and A box to put your questions there. Uh, I do actually have a question, um, so I'm going to actually uh, ask this question from um, Tamara Horton. Um, thank you all for such an engaging presentation. Our organization works in communities across three sub cities in Addis. Um, we focus on girls' education and healthcare with a licensed uh, health officer overseeing our basic needs clinic. How, we, how may we start a conversation for potential collaboration? If best to communicate offline, I mean, she has also put in her email address, which, is, which, I, which we can share. Um, it's uh, with the panelists. It's, uh, uh, and it's tamtam at studiosamuel.org. Uh, so how can we, how can uh, she start a, uh, a conversation for potential collaboration of work in ADIS? Um, so maybe the question should go to all of our panelists. So let's just go ahead and begin with uh, uh, Dr. Tedese and then Mr. Fikre. Uh, I'll be very quick on this. Uh, uh, since the Carter Center doesn't have project in ADIS, I... Uh, direct the question to uh, Mr. Fikre. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Fikre. Um, yes, that's perfect, uh, Dr. Zarifun. Uh, if I, if I, you allow me to talk a little bit about the entity program, uh, mostly the entity uh, people who are affected by entity are uh, those people who live in the peripheries, basically in the regions. Uh, actually, we, currently we don't have any. Uh, programmatic intervention in Addis, but dewarming for school ill children and uh, dewarming of women of reproductive health, uh, I mean mothers in a reproductive health group is part of the our program. Um, I think there is a possibility of collaboration uh, with uh, Dr. Tamrat's organization. We are very flexible to welcome Tamrat we have various technical working groups for the entity program. Of course, uh, we are calling for action for to have a multi-sectoral collaboration. So 
the education sector is our uh, giant partner for uh, the entry program. So if you are still working in your uh, children's and women, um, so you are most welcome to collaborate. Maybe we will take your project uh, out of at this, if there is a possibility of doing like that. So Thank you, Mr. I, Thank I, I, I already talked your email. I will uh, talk with you offline. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Fikre. Um, Dr. Kabere, do you want to add anything to, um, you know, making additional collaborations uh, related to the work uh, and entities? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rija. So Children Investment Foundation works on uh, uh, entities, but also we do uh, have, uh, you know, interventions related to uh, education, livelihood, uh, health, et cetera. So I think there is potential collaborations, particularly in one of our WASH projects, we are working, uh, delivering uh, you know, WASH services for schools. And I think there is a potential to collaborate. So uh, I have taken note of the email address and we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to reach out to Tamar. Thank you very much. Um, let's just, um, there's another question that I would like to pose to the panelists. The WHO Entity Roadmap 2030 um, foresees a number of entity achievements and milestones. Given the unprecedented challenges with COVID-19 pandemic, conflict, insecurity, population movement, and decline in funding for entities, how are we planning to overcome the challenges and achieve set targets as per the original plan? Um, let's just you know, pose this question um, uh, first to um, Dr. Kabere, and then I will move on to uh, Sarah Urian to respond to it. Yeah, no, this is really great question. Uh, we do understand the challenges of uh, 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 COVID-19, you know, a growing conflict here and there, as well as, uh, you know, uh, funding reduction in some of the aspects, you know. But I think, you know, uh, as any TD community collectively, would, we should also find solution, you know. Uh, one important thing is uh, there are several donors out there investing in other sectors. And I think this is a time for us as any TD community collectively to work together and bring new additional donors and philanthropic organization who potentially fund uh, NTD programs. The other important thing is, uh, you know, government ownership and also uh, public finance. You know, uh, NTD is not really requiring huge amount of resource. The amount of resource required to address NTD problems may account one to three percent of the national health spending. So there should be a very collaborative and you know strong advocacy work to endemic countries to realize this potential and also really invest in, 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 in these important targets. The NTD investment is not a forever one. There is time limitation. There are potentials for eradication. 42 countries have already eliminated one or more NTDs. So I think by you know coining these terms and also uh, providing our prepositions of elimination, we have to get government buying and bring countries forward uh, to invest in NTDs and you know uh, end uh, the neglect of some of the diseases. Thank you, Sarah. Do you want to exactly. add anything? Yeah, I'd just like to highlight um, some of the experience that the Guinea Room Eradication Program had, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I think there were two things that came out. One was, as I think Dr. Zerahun and others have mentioned, the, the real community ownership of the program, that it's really the village volunteers um, and others at the community level who are implementing the, the interventions to stop transmission. And so even when the, the program had to make some adaptations during the pandemic, perhaps you know, there's travel restrictions for some of the support staff to, to reach endemic villages, um, all the interventions were, were still taking place and, and active surveillance was still um, ongoing. And so I think really the, the strength and of the community ownership of the program was highlighted during that, the pandemic. And, and so activities were able to continue 
Um, and the other piece I think that that continues to come out is no matter what the challenges are, uh, the Guinea worm program and other programs always remain uh, nimble and, and able to, I think, as we say, adjust sales to um, to react to to the challenges. Uh, and sometimes, you know, if there's new population movements that that we are staying up to date with that and, and continuing to maintain that um, all populations who need to be reached are reached via whatever mechanism. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, indeed. Um, let me, um, so there, there is another question that has come to my mind and maybe um, as, as we are waiting for any additional questions, uh, let me ask this um, because Mr. Fickray actually pointed out towards the importance of cross-border collaborations and diseases and populations don't respect borders. Um, so how has Ethiopia addressed the need to work collaboratively with its uh, neighbors across political boundaries? to implement uh, interventions and make progress with the, with the disease elimination targets. Um, so can you elaborate a little bit more on that, Mr. Fikre? And then I will also ask uh, Dr. Zarahun to comment on the same question. Over to you, Mr. So, yes, it, would, it wouldn't be realistic to eliminate or interrupt transmission without addressing the uh, boundary issue. There is a high population movement across uh, boundaries. For example, we are neighboring with Sudan and South Sudan. Uh, we are strongly working with the South Sudan uh, to eradicate Guinea worm in the two countries. And uh, for instance, uh, we have uh, Sudan and Ethiopia on Kusarkasi's uh, cross border uh, elimination technical working group. Uh, uh, so we do have uh, it, it's joint intervention to, to eliminate oncosarcasis in the cross-border area. Um, so we have a best example about the metamagalabat. Uh, for the first time in Ethiopia and in Sudan, we eliminate oncosarcasis in, in the border areas. So we have a, such a strong collaboration, but the challenge is the ongoing insecurity in the border area is still challenging, but we are trying our best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Zarahun. Any comments on that too, from you? I think it is uh, well addressed. So if you have some other question, I'm more than happy. Yeah. So there's one other question that has that has come up, and that is, um, you know, as um, as as some of the NTD programs finish the NTD work in Ethiopia, um, you know, in terms of the disease uh, uh, eradication or elimination efforts, um, you know, what can you say about how prepared Ethiopia is for transition and handover of the NTD programs? Um, and we did talk uh, about um, sustainability earlier during the session as well. Um, so Dr. Zarahun, maybe you can comment on it and then we can go on to uh, Dr. Kabere. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, a very uh, difficult uh, question because uh, we are uh, going to, be, to go through road test. Uh, uh, as it stands, we are very excited with the achievements that have been registered, but a lot more needs to be done, especially as we approach uh, the uh, last mile and then the finish line. Uh, so uh, the uh, important source for optimism is ownership and engagement from the community. Uh, this uh, could not be uh, secured uh, without long-term investment in the community. So I am very comfortable with that. That said, uh, we uh, need parallel commitment from the government, especially in terms of domestic financing. Uh, as uh, important as it is, I don't want everybody to be blinded with that. And in fact, I would uh, like to summarize my remark by uh, referring to uh, an important word of wisdom, uh, which reads like the biggest economy is not the economy in the banks. The biggest economy is the economy between the two ears. So we have to mine, uh, we have to look into that mine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good um, quote. Um, Dr. Kabere, do you want to add something in just one minute before we close up the session? No, 
So thank you so much. I think Dr. Zarion has uh, concluded it very well. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. Um, and I want to thank the audience uh, for excellent questions and comments. And, and I, I really want to thank the panelists for their time and, uh, and basically outlining um, Ethiopia's unique and inspiring experience um, of creative implementation and philanthropy to reaching their neglected tropical disease endgame targets for kidney worm disease, trachoma, river blindness, and lymphatic filariasis. At the same um, point in time, we also heard about uh, the importance of replicating of best practices across the NTD programs. <clears throat> we also heard about the challenges, and then most importantly, some of the challenges which are in addition to the challenges within the country, the challenges which are the, in the cross-border areas as we work with, the, uh, with, the, with our colleagues and our neighboring countries as well which is actually very, very important to address. And I'm glad to hear that uh, from Mr. Fikre uh, that Ethiopia has been already working on some of those, um, those challenges. And, and, then, and then the commitment and about how to uh, help uh, eliminate, eradicate, or control neglected tropical diseases, uh, which comes um, from the political commitment and um, of, of the country itself, but also the commitment from uh, the implementing partners and donor organizations is, is key to the success of uh, the entity programs, um, not only in Ethiopia, but also globally, um, you know, at, where, wherever the entities still exist. So uh, again, I wanna thank you, everybody for their participation. Uh, and I also wanna thank the panelists and, uh, and the audience uh, for, for joining the session today and um, you know, asking um, good comments, and, uh, asking good questions and making uh, comments. I really appreciate that. And uh, as I said at the beginning, there is going to be a recording of the session, which is going to be available. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it's gonna be available right away, but we will make it available uh, later on um, so that it's available for people to uh, share with others who might not have been able to attend this session. Thank you very much, everyone. And with that, I conclude the session and uh, I wanna thank my panelists once again. Thank you. <laughs>